the sound bite that I've been that I've stuck with from the beginning is I'm running for Congress because we're losing our democracy and there's nobody fighting to win it back not in Washington anyway um, that's why I think the Occupy movement is important that's why I think it's important that we have Occupy candidates out there that we try and co-opt the structures the systems that govern us right now my name is Nate Kleinman. I am a 29-year-old activist with Occupy Philadelphia. I'm a human rights activist and an organizer by trade. I've worked in politics for the last few years as well to make a living. And um, I decided a couple months ago to run for Congress as a Democrat in the Democratic primary against an incumbent member of Congress um, who's been my member of Congress since 2005. In the context of the Occupy movement, I knew that this was going to be something controversial, to say the least. Uh, I actually expected it to be a lot more controversial than it has ended up being. Um, I imagine if I hadn't been involved in Occupy Philly for a few months before deciding to run for office, that people would not have um, embraced me as much as they have, at least in Philadelphia. When we had a debate soon after I announced my candidacy, about whether or not Occupy would uh, Occupy Philly would endorse candidates, I spoke, and I would do it again, even if I wasn't a candidate, that uh, that we should not endorse anyone, because we are a nonpartisan movement, and that's really important because it doesn't it, it doesn't let us be pigeonholed um, by one side or the other. If we're going to be successful at what our overall goal is, which is changing the country we have to appeal to all kinds of uh, Americans and uh, people around the world and, and, if, and by aligning ourselves with a particular party or even a particular side of the spectrum we're not going to be able to do that. And I brought a proposal to the, to the General Assembly that we have a discussion about people in the movement running for office before I made the leap because I wanted to know how people felt about it. I wanted them to know that I was thinking about this so that nobody would be taken by surprise and, and think that I'm trying to co-opt the movement. They recognize that there's value in it and it's an autonomous action. We talk a lot about autonomous action in the Occupy movement and this is just one more way that I can make a difference. Uh, I happen to have background and skills in campaign politics so I knew this would be something that, that I could do. Politico announced the day after I announced my campaign that I was the first Occupy candidate. People have, people have listened, and that's given me that's given me a lot um, a lot more of a window. Um, gotten some some really great support from a number of quarters. Um, thank God for Ben and Jerry's. Uh, ben Cohen has uh, has supported my campaign very generously. Uh, I had a fundraiser just last week with Joe Sestak who I used to work for and uh, who was a colleague of my opponents um, in, in the Congress. I don't look at it as validating the system the way I'm running against it, um, even though I'm running for office within it. Uh, I look at it as, uh, as trying to get in there and, and be a court jester and, and shine the light on all of the abuses and all of the, all of the problems. We need to take every possible avenue to changing the system whether it's working inside the system or outside the system. We need to amend the Constitution to overturn Citizens United. General Assemblies across the country, even at Occupy Wall Street, have endorsed that concept. So if we're talking about amending the Constitution, then in a sense we're talking about working within the system. I am continuing to participate in Occupy as a candidate. I will continue to participate in Occupy once I'm elected and I plan to continue being involved in Occupy after I retire from Congress because Occupy is a long-term project. It's not something that, that's going to be successful in a few months or a few years. Um, I plan to still be involved in the Free University of Philadelphia which is an outgrowth of Occupy, of Occupy Philadelphia. I plan to still be involved in the Occupy Vacant Lots and um, I, I'll be planting very small fruit trees this year in lots around the city and I plan to watch them grow into into productive trees and then be pruning them in 10 years with Occupy Vacant Lots volunteers. Um, I, I talk a lot about the American Revolution and the Occupy movement because I see a lot 
of parallels between the two. We have the same kind of distance between the people and the government. Um, it, it's something so abstract, it's, it's, it, it might as well be a monarchy on the other side of the ocean. Farmers and artisans and, and craftspeople around this country were coming together with their friends and neighbors in churches and in town squares and creating their own general assemblies. We wouldn't have a country if the Maryland Committee of Correspondence didn't organize the First Continental Congress in 1774. There would, would have been no Declaration of Independence without that process. People know who Paul Revere is, but they don't know that he was a member of a Committee of Correspondence. I, I think the more we tie what we're doing to the American Revolution, the more we have a chance to, uh, to win people over in this country, and especially in a place like Philadelphia, where people have such a strong sense of their own history.